Hey, welcome in, everybody. This edition of One with the Hot Book by True Philadelphia and Sports Fan. Please like and subscribe to the blog if you like what you're listening to. I am Joe Warwick, hosting tonight, joined by, of course, my great co host here, Andrew. And it is not the series we all wanted against this uh, Boston Celtics team at all. Uh, we got swept. And uh, unfortunately, Toby went down today, too, to add salt to the wound, as they say. So, uh, it's just not a series as a whole. Uh, we had lost Simmons before this, and then you had that happen on the going out day. So it just wasn't fun. Uh, so uh, how you doing? <laughs> uh, no, you're right. That was not what we wanted near, <laughs> nor expected. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've all been better. Uh, always a tough day when, when your team gets eliminated. So we'll, we'll break it down here and uh, move on eventually and start our – off season of uh, wonders, I guess. It's going to be very, very interesting what happens. Yeah, like the rejects say, we got to keep it strong, move along. You know? Right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I have to do eventually. Um, always tough day, though, on the, on the day it happens. And obviously, <coughs> with the, excuse me, with the Flyers, uh, make it, make, make the next coming days easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a fun series and a battle again, but I think we'll do fine. So, yeah, it'll be fun to watch But with the Flyers. But, yeah, the Sixers, they just haven't been uh, what we hoped. So I was going to say to start off, in this first round, um, who was the guy, and maybe in the whole comeback, but especially when the actual playoffs kicked off, that, like, disappointed, like, didn't perform to the level you thought he would perform to the most for you? Uh, I'll stick to the playoffs because obviously the first eight games didn't matter a whole lot. Um, I listen. I I love you know how much I like him and I'll defend him to the end. Um, there's two guys that really stuck out to me. First, I thought today Harris looked a lot better before his injury, but before today, Harris definitely struggled. He was far from the the main issue, but he was a guy you needed to step up with uh, Simmons being out. Again, I don't. I'm not going to sit here and complain. I know everyone likes to complain about the contract, but you can't rip on Harris for the contract. I mean, if someone came here and said, here, I'll sign you for five years, $180 million, I think everyone's going to take it. You're not going to be like, no, I don't think I'm worth that much. I'll, I'll pass and take the offer that fits me better. Yeah. No, you're not going to do that. Um, so I, I think his shooting percentage was a little down going into today. Today I thought he played excellent. Um, if he could have played like today, he did today. For his first yeah, three seven games. for 12 the day before he got injured. Yeah, so if, he, if if we would have played like he did today, those first, I'm not even going to say three games because everybody has an off day, but just game one or game three, he would have won those games. He would have won one of those games, and you'd be looking at a different story here. Then obviously, if he doesn't get hurt, you might have had a chance to win because it was the, the game was locked up at 77. He goes down, I think it was a 13 hour run, and it was 90. And he was grabbing boards today, too, more than, uh, I mean, he grabs boards, but he was grabbing yeah. them more than usual. Uh, so if he didn't get injured, that's a valid point. We might not be talking about being out and actually stealing a game there and having one game at least to be happy about. But, <laughs> Which I honestly think they might have. It was nine. It was seventy-seven, seventy-seven. He leaves, and it's all of a sudden, and I felt like a blink of an eye. It was ninety to seventy-seven. Um, but I, I'd say he was disappointing in itself. Uh, but again, he, he looked good today. I, I, people want him gone. I, I without question, want him back. I, I think I really believe in the, the four other guys outside of Horford. Nothing against Horford, just not the right fit. Uh, so I'd go Harris for the starter, um, and then the fa- uh, defender um, off the bench. <laughs> off the bench is what I meant to say. Um, I'd say Furcon. I mean, I, I know he's not the best defender, but you're, you're resigning for his offense, and, and he, I think it went over. He was over eight shooting. Well, isn't Park time. under contract for next year already? Though I thought we gave him two years. No, I'm saying they re-signed him this past off season. Oh, so okay, gotcha, gotcha. This past off season, they signed him to be a shooter and a scorer, and that's okay. it. Uh, kind of like a, a Bellinelli or something like that. And uh, he shows up, gets 40 minutes in the playoffs, and goes over for eight. Uh, has three total points, all from foul shots. So uh, that's not acceptable. Uh, I think they did miss out. Um, especially with the way that some of the defensive games they missed out with uh, obviously Simmons, but I think Glenn Robinson hurt him defensively off the bench as well, and they just had no answers on the defensive end once once you kind of saw the bench guys coming in. Oh, you mean just, Glenn being out too? Yeah, yeah. So just imagine if Glenn Robinson was able to come in and play defense instead of Raul Neto. Um, that could have been a different story there. So hey, just you no, know, he hit that pump fake three today. <laughs> yeah. that pump who, fake who, three. Who, who knows yeah. how that one is? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but no, I, that, that's where I'd go uh, in terms of this. I thought Burks played well for the most part. I, I mean, I still don't get why he wasn't the why he didn't play for most of that one game when they went uh, Neto in the second game. But mm-hmm. not my decision. Yeah, that was absolutely baffling. That was like a Stephen A. thing where it's like, I am bewildered, I am baffled, <laughs> I am appalled, I am completely perplexed. Like that was like what like what I saw that I wanted to have one of those reactions. Uh-huh. Like I was like, and then like I don't have like everybody thinks I hate Ferk. I don't. Zach hates Ferk. Uh, I'm not someone that hates Ferk. I just like good defense. So he pisses me off on defense. So I yell at him. So people think I hate him. Just because I yell at someone at a TV doesn't mean I hate you. It means I get pissed at you on one end. And then if you make a bunch of threes, then I'll be happy again. So it's kind of like a very – like, that's why me and J.R. Smith sometimes got along. And then at other times, I hated watching J.R. Smith because he would piss me off. Uh, but then because of his athleticism, he was one of my favorite players when he's on Denver because it was like, holy crap, he just dunked over three people, and he's not even that big. Um, so <laughs> that's why. Uh, that's why, I mean – Players I gravitate to, I love Thibault, the way he plays great defense. You just got to get him score, And you know he wants to shoot because he actually shoots the ball. So the problem's not, oh, we need him to shoot the ball. No, it's you need him to get his shot consistent. And then Kyle Quinn, I would bring back. He played well. He, he should have played more than he did. But when you put him in, he played well. I think he fit well in the team. He's a guy I would personally bring back as a cheap, cheap option because why not – bring back someone that's so cheap that actually plays well for you. He's probably not going to get more than the minimum. If he does, it'll be a cheap contract over the minimum. So I would say that's almost a no brainer. And then next year, a guy that, you know, I like, and I know you like more Mario say, I better start playing more. Otherwise I'm going to actually start being very pissed off about how we, we run our rotation. He will. You just you you just couldn't throw him in there. Like he he's played like two games in his career. You couldn't just throw him into a, a playoff game, especially the Celtics. A, I, I, I I had no issues with that. Uh, no, no, I was I'm just joking. But I would have just at that point I was like, we're in a lost cause. Even Brett mailed it in. We canceled practice. We might as well put Shayok in. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's so ridiculous. That still bothers me. Like I I, I get it. Um, I know it's never happened before. Oh three, but. Go out and practice. You guys got a job to do. Like, do your job. Get out there and do it. Like, it's one thing to get beat, but well, you man, know, that's, that's, that's just a cowardly way to yeah. cancel practice like that. AI called. You called? No, I said AI called. Oh. <laughs> yeah, AI called. And he's like, you know, practice. You guys don't need it. Right. And I'm like, oh, right, you're right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he got, they, he got in their heads and then they're like, oh, yeah, we don't need that. Um. But a guy we do like going forward, and he's a guy that we know he's in Club Tyrone for Tyrone Johnson, um, and a guy that a lot of people like, um, but he had turnover issues. He scored some points around, like, the teens most games. What did you think of Milton overall as a going forward uh, to build off of this? Because he's not going to be in that role, per, per se, when Simmons is healthy. Listen, you know I love Shaky Milton. I mean, I, I I said it from day one when they took him in the second round. He he's a sleeper. A lot of people didn't know much about. It. I, I uh, he's one of my favorite. Or not that, that's been a stretch. But he I I love the way he plays the game. He he's an excellent player. He he rose to the occasion. Uh, he got thrown into the starting lineup last second. It, uh, hey, he could be one of your favorite players. I mean, Nicholas Albay Kubel is one of my favorite players. He flies for like twenty five games. So, you know, no, I, no, I know, but he I, I, he is one of my favorites, but. Um, the the one thing that worries me is if you uh, and we'll see, pending what happens this off season. But I, I think you move Simmons back to the original one, uh, and Shake's gonna be a, a great piece off the bench. He he's a pure shooter. His defense is not good. Uh, there's <laughs> one there's one thing I really need to see him work on. It's that defense. Like he he had no match against Kemba, and, and Kemba's a good player. I'm not saying you're gonna shut him down to ten points or whatever, but I mean. It didn't look like anybody was on Kemba, and Milton couldn't get around a screen to save his life, uh, and, and that's why I'm gonna call out Embiid too. Uh, and I get it. Embiid had a fantastic series. I get it. You look at those points and rebounds totals. Yes, very well done. But I mean, if you go back and watch film on those screens, like what are you doing? He's he, he moves back and he just stands there, and the guy comes around the screen, and the guy's got a 20 foot open shot. Like you got to move up on that screen. And Brown actually called a timeout and shoot into him the one time. 
so there's a couple things that disappointed with Embiid. Overall, obviously, yeah, he did play well. He had no help. But uh, it just got to the point where it was a little frustrating to see because it was the same thing over and over again. Yes, yeah, I feel like what you said, though, this team, because you brought it up, this team throughout the year has always pissed me off with screens because it seems like they don't communicate that well. Like when we since we've got rid of guys like JJ, like guys that you know that are great off the screen players, now all of a sudden you lost that line of communication where everybody's off keel when you start using screens, it seems. I don't know if that's kind of because it seemed like you were hinting at that a little bit with them beat. I don't know if you just noticed that more overall this this year as a whole. Oh, it's been a problem for a while now, for a few years, and it's a uh, it's not a good situation. And maybe it's part coaching, but maybe it's not. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, you learned to communicate around a screen back in sixth, seventh grade, like uh-huh. it, even in CYO basketball when we play each other. Like, what, what was our coaches telling us? You got to communicate out there. So I don't care who's coaching you. If you're not communicating at the NBA level, that's that's beyond coaching. That, that's on the players. And I get it. I. I I'm not a full-on brown hater like everyone else. I'm not trying to defend <laughs> brown. I'm just saying, like, that that's issues beyond the coach, and that's where it's concerning. Like, I mean, you, you learn about communicating on the offense, defensive end, uh, catching a fly ball, I mean, tackle, like, whatever, in any sport. You learn about communicating in, in sixth, seventh grade. So if you're not communicating by the NBA level, to me that's just something off with the players themselves, whether it's – I'm not going to speculate, but whether it's a guy not getting along with another player, whether it's just not a comfortable situation. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But again, the, you gotta start communicating. That's exactly what. Yeah, that's what I meant more. Like their communications off when you have um, players where it seems like guys communicate more while playing pickup basketball sometimes than the Sixers communicate. Well, actually, I know they do because I do when I play pickup basketball. People communicate more sometimes. It seems like this damn team does on the court. Uh, so and that <laughs> and nobody cares. Like, like, it doesn't matter if you win a – like, you want to win normally when you're in the gist of the game, but it's not like it matters if you win a pickup basketball game. So, uh, that's like – I don't understand this team, why they always have had that issue with communicating. I understand the lineup hasn't been together that much, but, like, off the screen, like you said, basic plays, like, pick and rolls, like, all that stuff, like, anything like, oh, you go here, like, we're running a play where – we ISO, but then someone actually comes over here to get open, so it creates a pass. Like, you shouldn't be confused on those because you learn all those, and then you just have to drill them in. It's not like who you're running it with, unless if he forgets what he's supposed to be doing, should change it if both of you remember the play. You just have to both remember what you're – and it seemed like the Sixers were always out of sorts when they tried to run stuff. Yeah, and you you, you mentioned uh, – you, you mentioned the – um mentioned they're not playing long, but I don't care how long you play together. I mean, it's communication on defense. You don't you don't have to play an entire season with somebody. I mean, all you need is all you need is to be able to see see the guys screening. Like all, all you got to <laughs> do is say pick pick screen left, screen help. right or something. Yeah, like that. or help. Yeah. yeah, yeah it, it, it doesn't it doesn't the help situations I can understand a little more because like some players help out more than some others, so that I can get a little more. Oh but no, the, but I'm saying some players don't call for it. When oh they're yeah, yeah. Even say what? Well, yeah. Um, so I mean, that, I don't care how long you play together. Like you don't need you don't need to say anything for that. Like again, all you got to do is see the guy running up to, to to screen your teammate. I mean, you don't even know, need to know the guy's name. All you got to do is say screen left. You don't have to know his name. Um, oh yeah. So, yeah, nobody so, says that. Yeah, nobody ever in, in no sports does anyone ever say, "Yo, yo, what? Watch out, left, left, Robbie, left, Robbie." <laughs> like nobody ever puts the person's name, no matter what sport it is, in when they're trying to alert them about something. Usually, unless for baseball, because you're like it's just baseball, and you have all yeah. the time in the world to tell somebody to move over. Uh, but <laughs> other than that, you usually just say, "Pick left, pick left," like. Fataki's like, watch the check, and you like uh, because someone's gonna know who you're talking to if they're the one that just threw the puck off their stick. So uh, yeah. it's uh, that's why like normally you see that communication with other teams, and you watch it with Boston, who beat us. You see great communication between Kemba and anybody with the Celtics, and it, it's annoying because you watch their team, and I don't know if you saw, but um, when I put the scout, I don't know, do you know the Scout and Pals podcast? With Scal- Scalabrini does Brian Scal. Uh, I know of it. I don't. Listen yeah, to it, I resp- I don't really listen to him much either. But I responded to something they put on Twitter, 
And then our Celtics fan responded to the thing that I did. I think I responded with our podcast account, but it might have been mine. But he was like, yeah, I didn't even like watching this series because it's not competitive and I don't like watching. Like the last couple of games were more except for we blew this game at the end and it wasn't competitive well, at all. Hey, hey. Uh, Here's my thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say fun. it wasn't. I wouldn't say it wasn't competitive. No, that was after the first two games. I was going to say I talked but, to that guy. But, so. but here's the thing. I, the only game that wasn't competitive is game two. Like game one, we we had the lead in the fourth quarter. We we oh, blew. Yeah. Like, like, the set, like the Sixers should have been up two one in the series going into today, and that's what frustrates me the most. I think Even without it's not a competitive series because the Sixers are the Phillies. It's like how the Phillies blow because of the bullpen at the back end. The Sixers just forget what basketball is. In the last twelve minutes of the well, and that that's what becomes so frustrating. Like yeah. even without Simmons, you should have been up in the series two one if you knew how to close out games. Exactly. Like yeah. all you had to do is close these games out. Like and and, and it drove me crazy in game three. I know MB wants to be the hero, but he, he just tried to do too much. You like I get it. He had a great game overall, but he turned oh, that the ball, block shot. He, he turned the well the the turnover when he got double teamed and he threw the ball right to Marcus Smart and then he had the block shot and then another bad possession you had the lead you were up by two and you you turned the ball over slash a block shot three times in, in those three possessions and then it, that's how it changed. No, remember and, I said that during the season someone like Embiid forces it when we did one of these podcasts during the season sometimes too much at the end of the game. That's exactly yeah, that's exactly that. And maybe and it, I know he he wants to be the hero, but in those situations you get like if you look at the best and. I know he gets criticized for it, but it's the right basketball play. If you pass and find the open teammate, and I don't know, who, I know there's trust issues right now because guys were struggling at the time, but but you got to get it done. And even today, think about it. if Harris doesn't get hurt and you close his first two out, you could be looking at a three-one Sixers lead instead. Um, but it yeah. just makes me mad because if if we're healthy and Simmons is here, the series is different, and I think we're still playing. I'm not going to say we would have won the series because we obviously don't know. But you would have been still playing right now. You would have got at least two wins if Simmons is here. And that, that's just what's frustrating. But we'll, we'll see what happens in terms of that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you would hope um, because Simmons with MB could carry the torch. Uh, problem is we never could close out. Like, closing out games has been our Achilles heel and what has annoyed us fans for a while now. Um, where that needs to be fixed and it needs to be figured out why the heck that's the case because – well, part of it is at times we don't have the guys that you would want in. But then when we got Burks and Robinson and stuff, you had the defensive guys. And in the regular season, we still had issues closing out games at times. Uh, it's one of those baffling things that you can't necessarily put. It's one of those things you can't necessarily put your finger on why it always happens. That's why I compared it to the Phillies bullpen, because sometimes it's like, Oh my God, how did they blow another game? Like, you can't even put your finger on how it just keeps happening in every season and going forward. It's just annoying, like you said, and something they got to figure out. I think they will because Milton's really good at defense. He's going to keep getting better. I think Al Horford will somehow get off this team. I don't know how the heck they'll do that, but they'll figure it out somehow. Uh, Josh Richardson will have, uh, hopefully, has a better season overall next year and stays healthy because we know if he's confident, he's a decent a full court player and not just that he's pretty solid on defense when he's full confident. He can make a defensive team when he has his full confidence going. And Tobias is getting better uh, each year. And if you bring in a head coach, that's also better with that. He'll probably get better with that too. So, uh, because I honestly think this is it for Brett after this. So that's why I also kind of led with that into with that, because that was going to be my next uh, caveat here. Uh, well, what were you going to say on uh, the one point? I was going to say, uh, I think Horford's, uh, I know he's got the contract, but if you eat some of the contract, you take on something else, you'll find a way to move him. You just got to find out who, who who's available and who's trying to get a veteran and kind of eat some money. Um, look out for the Kings. I, I would like to see us make a call to them. I think that could be a potential destination, but we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll we'll do our off season stuff as you mentioned earlier, but so I don't want to get too much into that category yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, then yeah, we'll move on to coaching then, and then we're should we start with Elton or should we start? We'll start with Elton Brand because that's the one that's not as obvious. Um. So El, we saw Elton Brand uh, on the sidelines today at the end. And um, he's a guy, how people were saying how Fletcher was to Hextall 
people were hoping Brand finally was the guy like that to Hinky with the draft picks we got and finding the great puzzle pieces to them because Colangelo sure as hell wasn't. So um, that we were hoping he was that guy. Now you see a lot of Twitter bashing, a lot of stuff of now we don't think he's the guy. Uh, what's your opinion on Elton Brand? Do you think he should get more time or do you think they should bring in, if they're getting a new head coach, just start it all over and get a new GM, get a new head coach and go from scratch? Uh, Elton Brand has put himself on the hot seat. I'm not ready to say can him. Uh, the reason why, I think they did give a lot of the control to Brown. So I don't know how much control Brand actually had. Um, I think they let Brown take over a good amount of that. Uh, when the Colangelo uh, mess happened and he left, you saw Brown control the draft, and then you bring in Brand late. Um, so I think Brown had a lot of control over it, and I don't, I don't want to say he had full control, but I think he had a significant amount of control of, of the roster. So I think a lot of this might have been his doing. Who knows? There's no way to fully tell because obviously they're never going to come out and say that. Um, but here, here's my thing. I'm not calling for him to be fired, but if they moved on from him, I'm not going to sit here and be mad. Bicker about it, yeah. Yeah. Like, like Hextall, like, clearly made a lot of good moves, but we all know his issue was he wasn't willing to get rid of Hextall, and that's that's ultimately led to that decision. Yeah. So it was more, it was more. oh, you actually just got rid of a solid GM that built a pretty good roster. I don't feel that way about Brand yet, but I also... I'm going to give him because he didn't game. build the roster yeah. either. Because the roster, yeah. the core two were from uh, Hinky's draft picks and all that. So, yeah. so I, I will say this is a big off season for him. Uh, he's got a lot to prove if he wants to stay. Um, I thought it was kind of weak for him to leave the game early like he did. Like you're the GM, stay there till the end, be with your team. Uh, maybe that's just me. That's the way I felt about that to address that situation. Um, I think uh, I think you're going to be looking at an interesting offseason. I don't think Brown's back. Uh, I think and here's the other thing: I don't trust Joshua Harris to make good decisions. So, who, like, even if we get rid of Brand, I, I don't know who they're going to bring in. I mean, obviously, I, I, that's not my job. He I'm, made a decent decision with his one team. No matter what Devils fans say, I still think he's a decent coach. Uh, Lindy Ruff they hired with the Devils, so if he can carry that torch. Uh, maybe we can hire someone that has some experience that's uh, solid yeah. if we were to make a move at GM and also head coach. So, Well, and here's my thing. Here's one thing I will like about Brand for GM for the coaching decision. He he played in the league for a while. He's been in the, around the league for a while. He should know a lot of ins and outs about coaches. So I got a little confidence in him hopefully picking a good coach. He obviously took over. He obviously, uh, he obviously took over for um, – he took over for – uh, Carlangelo and Brown was already here, so it's an interesting situation. But uh, I, I think here's the thing: you're gonna get rid of Brown. There, there's many more issues besides just him, uh, so it's it's gonna be again. This, this off season is gonna be interesting, and uh, I'm gonna start doing my research on what 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 happened for this off season because I obviously haven't done any of that yet. I'll probably wait and enjoy the Flyers and see and wait till the their run ends before I kind of dive into all this stuff. But I, I, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun off se- or interesting off season. Uh, a lot of moves are gonna happen. Uh, so to answer your question, I, I'd stick with Brown for now. Or excuse me, Brand for now. Brand for now. Yeah, two B names, so that makes it a little annoying. <laughs> yeah, and B R two B R names. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be uh, hard on us, right? Nothing yeah. easy. But uh, well, Brown Brown's one though that you do think is gonna be done, right? Yes, I I think overall he's a good coach. Or, yeah, I think he's a good coach. I don't think he's that bad. I, I think people overreact to situations. Um, I, I think as a coach, pretty quickly, like Gabe did, actually, that might be a hot take. But if he gets fired, I don't think it's going to take him that long to find oh, another oh. job. I agree with you. I think I think he's coaching an NBA team in 2021, 2022 season. Or, well, who know who knows when the season's going to start. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, it's going to be an interesting situation. Uh, with what they're going to do. I don't see a way Brown's back. I thought some of the comments by players today were so interesting. Uh, Josh Richardson had some interesting words today that didn't back up Brown that well. 
I think I think overall they're going to move on from, especially getting swept. Uh, and I, I don't think you can use the Simmons excuse because you were projected by many, many analysts to be a top two seed, maybe three seed in the East, and you end up being six with Simmons there most of the year. So I don't think you can use that as an excuse to bring him back. I think, uh, again, I, I we don't know who had most control of the roster. I blame the construction of the roster more than the actual in-game coaching. So, so if he had a large part in that, then yeah, he, he's got more to blame. But if he, if that was all brand, then I, I, I lean more to brand on, on who to blame for the year. Just That's a like, good point. Yeah. Like you should have seen, and this is why I keep bringing it back. Who was it that, uh, Embiid didn't work with before? Nerlens Noel and Jaleel Okafor. Two, two centers in that spot. So you're, you're going to try it for a third time? I mean, for you know, hundred and twenty million dollars, whatever yeah, you should you should have saw it coming, and uh, I think it's the same thing the Eagles got caught in with Demarco Murray. They got caught in the situation where oh, we'll steal him from a rival. It'll hurt their team, hurt their defense. Yeah, he was quote unquote and beat stopper as well, but it, they they looked too much into that, and who knows, maybe Elton Brand playing with him and then being friends had a decision. Uh, as a young GM, maybe he let pers- personalities affect that as well. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Uh, but I, I don't see a way Brown's back. The problem is I hope they don't look too much into Brown being the problem because there's a lot more you got to fix than, than just Brown. So similar to Kapler, like yeah, th- it's the construction there more than anything. Mm-hmm. That's why I think uh, I'm not naming people now because I didn't get a chance to look into the free agency, but a more consistent shooter, another defender type guy, and a good, if you're not going to keep a Quinn, you're going to get a consistent backup. Well, one, you're going to get a consistent backup big man anyway because you need a consistent backup power forward or because uh, Mike Scott's not going to be back. But whoever that will be, we'll talk about that on our offseason episode when we get there at the end of the time when the championship's going or towards the uh, end of the postseason here. But did you have any final thoughts for uh, this episode as the Sixers? We were riding high on and very happy about – uh, I remember when I called into Mikey Miss's show uh, very early on, I was like, yeah, I think we have a chance at the championship. Well, pff, that didn't have come damn close to happening. Uh, so hopefully <laughs> uh, we do better next year and uh, build the roster up a little bit better, as Andrew said. But uh, do you have any final thoughts uh, as we're entering the 30-minute mark here? Yeah, only if we had a guy like J.J. Redick uh, that could shoot. Oh, wait, we did and let him go. <laughs> uh, but no. Very disappointing series. Hopefully, you find a way this offseason to fix it. Uh, listen, it is what it is, I guess, at this point. You shouldn't have got swept even without Simmons. I was hoping you at least take one. But uh, we'll move on from here. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave everyone with one name I want to see be a, uh, be a sixer by the end of this. And that's a guy who wants out of Sacramento. Look out for Buddy Heald. Find a way to get him to Philly. That's a consistent shooter and a young one, so that would work out well. Um yeah, Buddy Yield or uh, another guy with a B, uh, double B, Bradley Beal uh, would work out also if we could figure something out. They are a little bit older, but uh, still a great shooter. Um, so that works out well for us. But either way, we are talk about all those acquisition possibilities in our off-season podcast. Uh, Andrew, did you have any other final points or no, uh, please like and su- subscribe our uh, channel and let us know uh, if there's any players you want to talk about that you want the uh, Sixers to go after or anybody you think we should get rid of or bring back in terms of coaching GM-wise, anything we said today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I echo that. Like, comment, subscribe, comment, or anything you want us to talk about in the off-season episode and maybe potential guys you're like, oh, that seems like a guy I want on this team. And then we'll maybe talk about that. Not maybe. We will talk about that in the episode. But for Andrew, I am Joe. This has been the One with the Hive segment for the True Philadelphian Sports Cast. You can find Andrew at AJ underscore Santangela, the podcast at True underscore Philly Sport, and me at JJ Boric, B-O-R-E-K, not you, 26. And, uh, This has been One with the Hive. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the NBA postseason since our Sixers aren't giving you any enjoyment. Peace out, everyone. Yeah, Luka is a beast. (laughs) So we'll we'll leave you with the fact that Luka Doncic is the second coming of greatness in the NBA. So have a great and safe, pleasant day, everybody. This is One with the Hive for Andrew and Joe. Peace out.